Yeah, so just, uh, I will not give you too much of an intro. This is the first scene of Bagman, which is my first horror um, film that I've written. Um, knock on wood, as long as Cape, uh, South Africa doesn't shut its borders again, um, it will be shooting this February in Cape Town. Um, because I cannot read like uh, Alex can read. Uh, I poached a couple of his actors and another one of my own uh, that I work with. Um, so Mike Jarmus is going to read the action descriptions. Sophia Salamando is going to play the part of Emily. And Jeff Matchy is going to play her dad. Um, hope you enjoy and fire away when ready. The rhythmic pop of a ball tossed between leather gloves. Exterior, Little League complex, dusk. As the sun drops on a late summer day, we come upon the only people putting one of the many diamonds to use. Emily, 10, fast pitching a softball to her dad behind the plate. Beautiful, Em. Listen, focus more on the arm whip than the wrist snap, okay? Look, I'll give you more velocity. She nods, then hits the mitt with an even louder pop. <laughs> now you're talking. <laughs> they practice for a time, the hum of crickets mounting in the nearby woods, an idyllic moment with one incongruity. Lying in the pitcher's mound is a stuffed animal, so old and worn that we can't tell if it's a bunny rabbit or a teddy bear. You know, I, I had a long talk with, uh, with mom this morning. She said your bad dreams are getting worse. She shrugs, noncommittal then tosses another strike. She also said there was uh, something you needed to tell me. Emily drops her eyes to the ground, avoiding her dad's eyes. Remember, remember that day you let me ride my bike to practice? Oh, when uh, Coach Bynes moved you guys over to uh, Roosevelt Park. Uh-huh. And remember how I promised to take Sutton's Lane so I could go over the train tracks instead of? Emily turns to the woods where we can just see the electric overhead lines of train tracks and her dad understands. What you, you rode through the storm drain, didn't you? It, I, it saved me like 20 minutes on the way home. I, I, I know that, Em, but... Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey. Did something happen? Her only answer is to absently twirl a lock of her hair. Emily. Nothing happened, Dad. Just freaked myself out is all. Emily scoops up the stuffed animal and tucks it under her arm like a girl half her age, a sight not lost on her father. Is, uh, is that why you started carrying around Bunny Bear again? I don't know, maybe. Emily's eyes nervously swing from the woods to the fields to the road back to town, but the complex appears to be empty. Dad watches her do it, wincing like, what have I done? Listen, listen. When I said a bad stranger might be hiding under those tracks, I, I was just trying to keep you from getting too close to the train. But look, I, I'm really sorry if, you know, if I took it too far. And, and, and if you promise not to go under there again, I'll let you ride to practice anytime you want. It takes a loving squeeze for Emily to finally smile, and we can tell how good it feels to finally get it off her chest. And as for Bunny Bear... Exterior, parking lot, dusk. Theirs is the only car in the gravel parking lot, and Dad pops the trunk to reveal boxes marked Salvation Army. Before you say no. Her face says it first, and she clutches Bunny Bear tighter. Mom thinks one way of tackling this is to, you know, let go of some of the things you needed when you were little. And I agree, but, but we, we also agree that when that happens, that's entirely up to you. Another squeeze of the shoulder lets Emily know he means that, when the light towers above automatically switch on. Let me, uh, let me, let me toss the gear in the shed, and um, then we can go grab some pizza. As Dad lugs the bag of gear they borrowed over to a nearby equipment shed, Emily digs through the car's trunk. 
Inside are old kids' books, hand-me-down clothes, and baby toys. Her old jumpy chair elicits a chuckle, but she hasn't read, worn, or played with any of the stuff in years. Emily looks back at her dad, who's racking up some bats in the shed, and we know what she's thinking. Maybe her parents are right. Maybe it is time to put childish things aside. She drops Bunny Bear into a box and slams the trunk shut. Climbing on the hood, Emily takes a deep breath, and we can tell this is a bittersweet moment for her, but it also feels like something has changed for the better. Until she hears the sound of humming. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Just barely audible above the chittering of the crickets and so monotonous that it's hard to tell where it's coming from. Emily scans the parking lot, but it's empty and the humming sounds way too close for the woods. The notes getting louder now, gathering into a vaguely familiar melody. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That a nursery rhyme? An old folk song. Emily must know, for the blood rapidly drains from her face. Her dad is still over her shoulder, locking up the shed only 20 yards away, while the humming's so near it can only come from one place. Slowly, like she's working up courage to peek under her bed, Emily inches headfirst towards the space beneath the car, when the humming suddenly stops. What's worse, the crickets have gone silent too. The only noises Emily's shallow breathing and her sweat-soaked skin sliding against the chrome of the car as she loses balance and tumbles headfirst to the ground. A moment of pure panic, Emily scrambling to her feet but unable to resist looking back under the car to see nothing at all. She dusts some of the gravel off her knee, looking more than a bit embarrassed, more than a bit relieved, too, until bzz, high above, one of the light towers begins to flicker out, as if it just had all its power cut. Not a big deal at all, until the next light flickers out, too, and the next one to that. Emily slowly backs away from the car, calling out in a voice so dry and whispery that no one could possibly hear. Daddy? But when she turns around to face the equipment shed, her father is no longer there the door still open, revealing only the darkness within. Daddy? Daddy, are you in there? No response. So Emily jogs toward the shed on legs, spindly with fear. But it's only when she reaches the door that she hears a weird gurgling from somewhere inside. And that's when she sees him. Daddy! Interior equipment shed, dusk. Down on the floor, Emily's father violently convulses as if having a massive heart attack or stroke. His face droopy and contorted, saliva bubbling from his mouth. Emily hysterically tries to help him up, but it's like dad is paralyzed. All he can do is pull her close and whisper, Run! Run! But it's far too late for that. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Emily wheels to see a shadowy figure silhouetted in the doorway, humming a song we recognize but still can't place. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. dark to make out a face or what he's wearing. All we can tell is that he's large and grotesquely misshapen with spidery arms that unsling something from his shoulder. A leather bag sewn and patched together so many times that it must be very, very old and just large enough to fit a child inside. He patiently unzips it, then bursts into giggles. <laughs> Muffle, <laughs> sound filled with malicious glee, but not as awful as Emily's strangly Silent screams when she desperately begs her father to save her. <laughs> or the sight of her 
being yanked into the air and brutally stuffed into the bag, Emily trapped inside a claustrophobic nightmare, arms bent back behind her, face pressed against a suffocating wall of burlap and leather. The last thing she sees is a thin sliver of twilight bobbing crazily above. Then with a harsh and rusty zzz, the bag is closed and the little girl is taken away. Smash to black, title card, Bagman. Thank you guys, very much appreciated.